I'd like to demonstrate to you a very simple program that makes use of STAT to extract and print the timestamps on a file. I've called it Show Times. And here's the code. First of all, let me confess that there is no error checking here. So what are the main features? Here we're allocating a STAT structure. That's where the results of the STAT call would be returned. Here's the actual stat call. We're statting a file foo. We've hardwired the file name in, as you can see. And we're returning the results in the stat structure SB. Now, we've already seen that the timestamps on the file come back as members of the stat structure as st underscore a time, m time, and c time. They are of type time t which I'll talk about in the next module. It's uh, the standard Unix and Linux measure of time. Uh, in order to get a printable version of that, we're passing it to C time, which returns a printable string. You'll see what those strings look like in a minute. So we've got three printf calls printing out the access time, the modification time, and the change time on the file foo. So let's compile that. We're placing the output in our bin subdirectory as before. Okay, now let's run it. And there's the output. You'll see all these timestamps look very similar. This was because I created this file foo earlier today. In fact, you can see at uh, 8.42 this morning. The time now is uh, just 1600 hours there. Let's see if we can affect the timestamps on this file. First of all, let's make a copy of foo, calling it bar. Let's run show times again. And you'll see here that the access time has indeed been updated to now or a moment ago. Uh, the other two timestamps are unchanged. That's to be expected. Uh, the CP command has read the file, so it's only the accessed timestamp that's been updated. Let's try uh, changing the permissions on the file to something like this. And we'll run show times again. And now if you look carefully, you'll see that the last change time has been updated. Uh, you've got to look carefully at these timestamps because, of course, everything's happening within quite a short time scale. So you really need to look at the minutes and the seconds on the timestamp to see which one is later. Finally, let's try modifying the file. So let's just append some data to the end of it. And we'll look at the timestamps again. And you'll see that, in fact, the last modified time has been updated, and also the last change time has been updated too in this particular example. So you begin to get a feel there for what the three timestamps mean and what kind of activities cause them to be updated. Now, one of the things that you might think is a little bit odd is that Linux needs to write to the inode to update the a time timestamp just because a file has been read. And this can cause problems on some file systems like the uh, flash memory file systems that have a limited number of read write cycles. Partly because of this, there is a mount option that you may be familiar with, the no a time mount option that will prevent the file system from doing updates on the A time timestamp every time a file is simply being read.